بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم نحمده و نسلی علی رسوله الكریم So now we're moving forward into the second section, second fossil. Okay, what does he say here? Uh, we have here, we discussed already the fossil awal regarding what was tafsir, what is usul, what is tafsir, and a very, very simplistic view of how tafsir developed. Okay, now we're moving on to the masadir of tafsir. And masadir means sources. I mean, what do we use? as evidences to, trans, uh, to understand the meaning of the Qur'an. So there are four evidences, there are four sources of tafsir. Qur'an, Sunnah, so Qur'an means the Qur'an itself. Sunnah, the sayings of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Aqwalu salaf, it's the sayings of the salaf. And we'll explain, we'll define salaf later on. And that logha, and we'll define that later on as well. So the first discussion is regarding the Qur'an. Obviously second will be regarding Sunnah, third will be regarding Aqwalu Salaf and the fourth we discuss regarding Logha. Now in here we have a few Masail. When we discuss the Quran, what is Tafsir al-Quran bil Quran? This is very the first Masala is very simple. Is that Tafsir al-Quran bil Quran means basically you explain the meaning of one verse because of another verse. So because the word is explained in here, so because this ayah means this and the same word is used it also means here. And we understand as we give examples. So simply, Tafsir al-Quran bil Quran means to explain the meaning of one verse based on the context, the meaning or something we understand from a, another verse. Okay? Now, <clears throat> the second masala, the second issue we are discussing, and this is very important now, is the maratib of the tafsir. So let's say, for example, we have one verse. There's another verse. And we want to say, well, this verse explains the meaning of this verse. We want to say that. How, how do we know? What tells us that this verse is actually referring to this verse? Well, it could be, for example, maybe the Qur'an itself tells us that this verse or this part of the verse explains this part of the verse. Maybe the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he tells us that this second verse, verse number two, explains verse number one. He doesn't say explicitly, but he says, well, look, this verse says this and this verse says this. Do you understand? Or somebody themselves say, well, look, this verse looks like this verse. The Qur'an itself doesn't explicitly state this. Or the Prophet never said it, but you can tell from the context. I will go through each of the examples. So what we're looking at in this mas'ala is how two verses relate and what is the context. I mean, how can we define or be sure or how can we claim one verse or one part of a verse is explained the part of another. So based on this, we can say here that the maratib, the rutbah, the levels of tafsir bil Qur'an bil Qur'an are of three. Yes, we said three levels. Either, either is tafsir al Quran bil Quran bi bayan al Quran. That the, the Quran itself doesn't say this, but you can tell from the structure and the grammar and the context and the literature of the actual text itself shows us that this is explaining this verse. Okay? Or the Prophet tells us that this verse explains this verse. Or somebody does ishtihad. Somebody later on tells us that look, it seems as if this verse is the same as this one. And we explain each in detail. The first example, Tafsir al-Qur'an bi bayan al-Qur'an. Meaning that the Qur'an's text itself tells us that this, this is very obvious. You don't want to explain this. It's like everybody knows this, obvious. So for example, was sama'i wa tariq. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes an oath by the sama and the tariq. I'm not going through Tafsir, just explain the principles. And then the thing is, wa ma adraka ma tariq. Wa ma adraka, how do you know what is a tariq? So what is a tariq? The, the next verse is a, is a, is a bayan of this. An najm thaqib so the Qur'an itself explains to us that Tariq means a Najm al thaqib Because it's like a Badal or it's a Khabar You can tell from the context straight away This is like without any doubt You understand? So this Tafsir al-Qur'an al quran it's, like, it's obvious, everybody knows this It's not even like a, something, but you know it intuitively Yes? So if there's a Badal or if there's a, like a Khabar saying what it is Then automatically Tafsir al-Qur'an al quran And you can't even reject this If you reject this, it's almost like you're rejecting the Qur'an if you say, well, Tariq doesn't mean this, Tariq means something else. They say, well, the Quran says this. There's no, there's no leeway for interpretation here. Okay? Another example. وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا إِلِّيُّونَ How do you know what the إِلِّيُّونَ is? What comes after that? كِتَابٌ مَرْقُومٌ يَشْهَدُهُ الْمُقَرَّبُونَ The Quran explains that إِلِّيُّونَ is a kitab which is مَرْقُومٌ يَشْهَدُهُ الْمُقَرَّبُونَ Do you understand? I'm not explaining the ayat here. I'm just explaining the concept. So in the, what, how do you know what إِلِّيُّونَ is? So the next verse explains it. So now this is actually the Quran itself. Another example, again, you see it many places. Innal insana khuliqa halu'a. Man has been made in a form or in a state that he's halu'a. And what is halu'a? Halu is this. 
when shar comes to him, he's jazu. When good comes to him, he's manu. Whatever those means, that's not our focus point right now. What, it, what we're focusing on here is that halu is a word. And the next text in blue, all the way to here, all of this what explains what the word halu means. So this tafsir is like, this is, this is, this is not even a tafsir. It's like basically, it's reading the text. But we just categorize it. It's for categorization's sake. So now this is obviously tafsir al-Qur'an ibn al-Qur'an And you can't say, oh, well, oh halut means something else Because the Qur'an itself says this So when the Qur'an explains what it says I can't say, oh, um, can you get me a pen? I eat this smart board pen Are you get me another pen? I said, well, I said get a smart board pen He said, well, oh, I thought pen meant this But I said, I clarified it myself When the mutakallim tells you what he means Then there's no need for a bayan So this is what it is here Now the next one is tafsir al-Qur'an bayani rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam He tells us the, that this verse reply, refers to this verse Or these verses can be linked together Again, you're not going to tell us directly But we can understand it from the hadith For example There's a hadith in Bukhari regarding this verse So in Surah An'am, Allah says وَإِنَّهُ مَفَاتِهُ الْغَيْبِ لَا يَعْلَمُهَا إِلَّا هُ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He possesses the keys of the unseen Nobody knows it except Him Yes? I don't know if you've seen recently But somebody sent me a picture In the exam So there's a tafsir of this so he says, Mafatul Ghaib la ya'lamuha illa hu. The keys of the unseen, only Allah knows it. So the, the Ustaz went to tafsir question that what are the Mafatul Ghaib? Mention them. So the student wrote, <laughs> the Quran says, La ya'lamuha illa hu. So how am I supposed to know it? <laughs> so what it means here is the details of Mafatul Ghaib. Only Allah knows the Mafatul Ghaib. You understand? So, and then, so, so the hadith says that Salim ibn Abdullah, Salim ibn Abdullah. So Salim. So Abdullah, he is Abdullah ibn Umar, son of Umar ibn al-Khattab radiyallahu anhu. Okay? And his son is called Salim, because there was one great Sahabi called Salim, so Abdullah named his son Salim. So Salim, son of Abdullah, narrates from his father. So Salim narrates from Abdullah ibn Umar. He says that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, Mafatihu al khaybi khamsun. That the, the keys of the unseen, I mean that the unseen things are five. And then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam read the verse from Surah Luqman. So in Surah An'am, Allah says, Mafatihu al ghaib And here Allah says, In the Allah il musa'a. So the, the hour, when's the last time? Allah knows that, the details. Yunazzilu al ghaib Allah is the one who sends down the, uns- the rain. How much rain, when, how much proportion. So if a weatherman tells you when the rain is going to come, he's looked, at the, he's looked at the clouds and tells us, that's, that's nothing. Whether he tells us one day in advance, or two days in advance, or even a week in advance, roughly what it's going to be like, is because they look at the clouds and look at it. That's nothing. It's like before, totally before any signs become apparent. Allah knows. And even then, how much, which miqdar, how much, where, when, only Allah knows. Yes? Wa ma fil arham and number three. So number one, number two, number three, wa ma tadri nafsum ma da taksibu khada. Number four, and number five. Nobody knows exactly what he's going to earn tomorrow and nobody knows where he's going to die. Again, I'm not going to tafsir here, but what does it say? So now the Prophet clearly said that Mafatihul Ghaib is Khamsun. So the Mafatihul Ghaib mentioned in Surah An'am are mentioned in Surah Luqman. So these are five things unseen which only Allah knows the depth of these things. Do you understand? So now this is a tafsir. Hadith is telling us what this Quranic verse links to this Quranic verse. It's a tafsir of Quran ibn Quran on the indication or the pointing out of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Do you understand? So as long as this sanad is sahih, as long as the hadith is sahih, we know the Prophet has said this, then this is also, there's, there's no need for us to argue regarding this. Because the Prophet has said this, so the Prophet knows more about the Quran than we do. So as long as the sanad is sahih, and it's authentic narration, he has said this, we can be sure, or we can have itmi'nan that the Prophet has said this, then that's fine, we accept this hadith. Do you understand? Everybody following? Yes? Any questions on site? Online? Muhammad Abdullah, following? Another example of this, it comes in a hadith, the prophet, it comes in a hadith, so regarding this verse, in Surah An'am again. Alladheena amanu wa lam yalbisu imanahum bi dhulmin. Those who believe and do not mix their iman with any dhulm. So for them, ulaika lahumul amn, Allah mentions reward for them. So the Sahaba were like, everybody does wrong, we all do wrong. You understand? So he says here, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu narrates that when these verses were revealed, shakka dhalika ala al-Muslim. The Sahaba were a bit concerned that those who do not do any wrong, we all do wrong, we all make mistakes, we all slip up, we all have errors. 
So they said, Ya Rasulullah, Ayyuna la yadhlim nafsahu. Which one of us does not oppress himself? Everybody does wrong, everybody is zulm. We, we, we might miss a salah, we might say something in anger, we might oppress somebody by mistake. Something or the other, we may do something. So we all do kind of, some kind of zulm. We may not fulfill somebody's rights, we forget to fulfill a promise. Things happen, we slip. So, ayyuna la yadlim nafsahu. So, Allah is saying here that this promise is lam yal bisu imanu bi zulmin. They have iman and there's no, there's no the zulm, there's no, no wrong, no zulm, adulterates the iman. So the companions were worried. Do you understand? So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he didn't tafsir. He explained this using another verse. He says, Laysa dhal. It doesn't mean like what you understand it to be. What is it? Zulm inna ma huwa shirk. Zulm is what? Shirk, polytheism. Alam tasma'u ma qala luqmanu libnihi wa huwa ya'idhuhu? Did you not hear what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has narrated to us regarding Sayyidina Luqman when he gave nasihah to his son? Ya bunayya la tushrik billah inna shirka la zulmun azim. That shirk is a great oppression. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is telling us that look, this verse here is the tafsir of zulm. So in Surah An'am, the word zulm is, is mentioned and it, the other verse, inna shirk la zulmun azim, tells us what shirk is. So sorry, what zulm is, which is what shirk. So the Prophet himself is, is, is pointing out and joining ayat together and displaying it to us. This is another type. And again, as long as the son of this Sahih, then this is, this is explained. We don't, need to, we, can't, we don't need to, we can't contradict this. You understand? Do you understand? Now, what is the third type? Is where is tafsilul Quran bil Quran bijtihad. Somebody themselves say, look, this verse links to this verse. Pardon me? Yeah, no, that's a aqwal salaf. That's different. What we're saying here is that when we do tafsir Quran bil Quran, but who is applying the Quran to the Quran? One is the way is that Allah Himself answer to a question. That's Allah is telling us that this, this ayah is. The other, the Prophet tells us. Now, after that, anybody else, they themselves uh, say that it seems to me, it appears to me that this is the same thing. This verse linked to this verse. They do their own ishtihad. So, for example, now, this is obviously when somebody is making their own effort, their own thoughts, then what's going to happen automatically? Some will be right, some will be wrong, some will be okay, possible. So, when somebody, a mufassir, meaning any person who's trying to tafsir, he uses and says, This verse is the same as this verse. It's not clear from the Quranic text. The Prophet hasn't mentioned it, it's his own apparent. So, sometimes, yes, it's obvious. For example, Imam At Tabari, rahimahullah, he says, Sirat al ladina an amta alayhim. So who's an amda alayhim? Oh Allah, show us the path of those whom you have bestowed your favor upon. So who's those who Allah has bestowed his favor upon? So when he explains this, he says there, he says, in the Jariya Tabari, he says, Nadiru ma qala rabbuna jalla thana'u fi tanzilihi. He's making reference to another verse. And here it says here, Fa'ula'ika are with those people whom Allah has blessed. And then the mean is bayaniya. So now this verse, yes, is saying Allah has bestowed these people. And who are these people? I.e. the Anbiya. So that means that An'am Allahu alayhim is the same as An'amta alayhim. And who are them? Who is these people? What's the bayan of al So that means An'amta alayhim refers to Nabiyin, Siddiqin, Shuhada and Salihin. Now the, the Quran is two separate surah. We can't, we can't deduce from the context of the Quran that this is exactly what it means. The Prophet hasn't told it to us, but common sense and logic, everybody would accept that. Yes, this second verse is an explanation of An'amta alayhim. But in theory, it is correct. It's maqbul. Everybody, all the ulama have accepted this. But in theory, it is open to interpret. It's open to argument and debate. But obviously, you can tell common sense, logically, everybody agrees that yes, the An'amta alayhim has been explained in another verse, and it is the Nabiyin, Siddiqin, Shuhada, and the Salihin. Do you understand? Some, sometimes you can get hit and miss. For example, in Surah Abasa, Allah says, Thumma sabila yassara. Thumma sabila. I'll explain it more detail later on. So Allah used the word sabil. Yes? Allah has made the path easy for him. Allah has made the path easy for him. So Mujahid, his opinion was that this sabil mentioned in Surah Abasa is the same that is mentioned in Surah in Hal Atal in Sanihin min al Dahri. He says, Inna hadaynahu sabila imma shakiru wa imma kafura. So we have guided him to the path. Each person has the ability to understand what is right and what is wrong. 
and then he himself then either becomes thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and stays on this path, the straight path. وَإِمَّا كَفُورُ He doesn't follow the path and he, 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 he becomes misguided. Do you understand? So in one verse Allah uses the word sabil. In another verse Allah uses the word sabil. Mujahid, his opinion was his ishtihad and his effort was, his thought was that the, the, the sabil mentioned in this verse is the same sabil mentioned in Surah Abasa. And the sabil here refers to what? Uh, guidance. It's referred to what? Guidance. But is this, the, does the Quran tell us this Sabil and this Sabil is the same? Did the Prophet tell us this Sabil and this Sabil is the same? This is why his own Ishtihad. That's why now, Abdullah ibn Abbas, other people said no. This Tafsir, this tafsir of the Quran, the Quran is not 100%. That's why ibn, ibn Abbas said no. It doesn't mean this. Abdullah ibn Abbas said that the path Allah has made for him is, you get a baby 10 pounds with like a, this big a head. How does it come up from his mother? It's almost like impossible. But Allah has made it possible and we get childbirth every day. So he thinks Sabil here means the womb, the path of the womb from which the child comes out. Do you understand? Now if you look at the whole verse, again, the whole verse is what? Allah says, woe to man, man is very ungrateful. Look at it. Min shay'in khalaqa. What have we created him from? We have created him from a drop of sperm. Then we have formed him. Thumma sabila yassar. Again, then we have made the Sabil easy for him. Then we give him death, then we put him in the grave. Then when we wish, we will resurrect him. So he's saying here that look, we created him from a nutfa, then we formed him, then in life we gave him the guidance. And then we give him death and then we resurrect him. Abdullah Nibba is saying no, we don't think it like this. We think he's all, because this, this would mean what? This is creation, 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 guidance, creation, creation, creation. This is no, we don't think. This sabil refers to imma shakin wa imma kafura. We think say, yes, this is all guidance. Sorry, all creation. You get what I'm trying to say? So if you take Mujahid's opinion, you're going from the bayan of the creation to guidance back to creation again. And if you take Abdullah Ibn Abbas's opinion, it's all to do with his creation. That look, we have created you from nutfa, then we formed you in your mother's womb, then we brought you out of your mother's womb, then we give you death, then we put you in the grave, then we we'll resurrect you. So again, it can be right, Mujahid could be right, but it's not Qat'an, it's just his opinion that this verse means, Sabila means this. And Abdullah ibn Abbas other said, no, it doesn't mean that. You understand? So this type is debatable. It can be right, it can be wrong. Or it can be just, well, possibly both. You understand? So this is a lower type where somebody themselves try to think that, to me, this verse refers to this. Do you understand? And the last example is something which is completely false and false. I just made it one example just, just to give you an example. Like, like for example, Allah says, وَجَعَلَ اللَّيْلَ سَكَنَ Allah has made the night a second. And everybody knows second means what? A, a place of resting in peace. But if somebody says, no, 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 it means here Allah has made the night salah. Say how? Because in another verse Allah says, salah taka sakanul lahum. Your salah is a peace for them. So salah is second, isn't it? So if salah is second, that means ja'ala light. So if salah is second, that means that this salah is here. So Allah has made the night a place of salah for you. It's the Quran Quran. I'm taking one verse. I'm just making this example to show you how it can be wrong. I take one verse and I put it onto another verse, but that's not what it means. It's ishtihad, or example. Just to show you how you can get wrong. So even so whenever you see tafsir Quran the Quran, it's not always right. If it's a Quran is clearly saying that this Quran, like, it's like the text shows you, it's explaining the text is flowing as one. Then this is Quran bil Quran and Qat'an, there's no, no, no debate in this. If the Prophet has said that this means this, then as long as the Sanad is Sahih, we accept it. Amanna Sadaqna. And if any Mujtahid, whether it's the early Mufassin or later Mufassin, who said this verse applies to this verse, then we have to analyze it. It's open to, you can have it correct, you can have it wrong, you can have it bain bain. Do you understand? So that's the first level. When we have Tafsir Quran bil Quran, how, how do we link the two ayat together? Are they linked it's definitely? Are they link, linked by the, the, the Prophet saying they are linked? Or are they linked simply because, or they simply linked just because somebody tried to apply it? And when they tried to apply it, they could get it right, very obvious, like Ihdna Sarat al Mustaqim. They can get it half half, where it's like, yeah, it's not wrong, but it doesn't seem to flow with the text. Like, Thumma Sabila Yassara. Or it can be just like wrong, like this example I made up just to show you how daft you can get. Do you understand? Are you following me? So, this is how you tafsir the Quran, Quran. So, you understand. Then tomorrow we continue another level of, another way of analyzing tafsir al-Qur'an and al-Qur'an. Understood?
Any questions? Everybody online following me? Inshallah, we'll discuss that later on. When we get to when we get to Aqwalu Salaf, we will then say, well, when Abdullah ibn Abbas says something, what's its level? That will come under Aqwalu Salaf. So Sahaba, Tabi'un, Antabu Tabi'in, their tafsir, we discuss that inshallah in Aqwalu Salaf. What's the level of their tafsir? Okay? G, any other questions? Okay, subhanAllah. G? No, that is I made up something just to show you that you can get somebody just try to do something and you get it wrong. Yeah? This is, I just, this is something I could thought of that a bit. Yeah? Okay? Or you can say, for example, uh, Allah says, Aqeemu salah. So we say we have to establish salah. But Allah says, Inna salah taka salah kalnun lahum. So that means the Prophet can do salah for us. So if the Prophet performs salah, it, it suffices for us. You can do like, you can just make these weird interpretations. So even though you use the Quran to do tafsir of the Quran, so Allah says, Aqeemu salah. It's for us to establish salah. But the Prophet Allah said, Salah taka sakanun lahum. That the Prophet's salah for them is okay. So that means that we don't have to perform salah. Just like, just make these weird, stupid things just so that you can see that you can use a Quranic verse to do tafsir another verse, but it's still not applicable. It just doesn't fit. You understand? You don't get these that often unless it's like one of those batil false groups. Any other questions? Okay. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika wa nashadu wa la ilaha illa anta wa nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayka.